as a student. Uh, in last session, we discussed about the compound gear trend and uh, reverted gear trend. Okay? And we saw some numerical which is based on the compound and reverted gear trend. In today's session, we discussed about the epicyclic gear trend. So, first of all, we discussed what is epicyclic gear trend, then, and then after we saw some numerical or we will see how we can find out the velocity ratio of the epicyclic gear trend. So, the epicyclic gear train is a type of gear train in which the axis or shaft on which gears are mounted, the shaft will also rotate with some reference center or some reference axis. Okay, so this type of the gear train is called as the epicyclic gear train. Sometimes epicyclic gear train is also called as the planetary gear train. What are the applications of the epicyclic gear drain? The application of the epicyclic gear drain are the back wheel or the leg machine in which the epicyclic gear drain are used. In some watches, epicyclic gear drain are used. If we see in some watches, there is a small short watches or some short circular second hand are provided if it is the, this is the watch and in which this is the Second hand, but in some watches there is a specific small circle which is present in a watch and which is rotated as per the second. So in, in such type of the gear train, the epicyclic gear train are used. So we will see what is the epicyclic gear train. See here, here the gear A is meshing with the gear B and there is the arm C. Okay, gear. A is meshing with gear B and the center of these two gears are connected to each other with this arm. Suppose if I make this arm C fixed, if I make this arm C fixed and give the rotation to gear A in a clockwise direction. Here I make this arm C fixed and gives us some rotation in a clockwise direction to gear A. Gear A is meshing with gear B so that gear B will rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. Anti-clockwise direction. So it is look like a simple gear. Okay. But but if I make instead of fixing the arm C, I fix the gear A. I fix the gear A. I will mark this center as a pole and this center as a pole. I suppose I mark this gear 1 as a fix and give the rotation to this arm. Suppose I make this gear A is fixed and gives the rotation to the arm. Then this gear B will rotate upon this will rotate upon this gear and also it rotates around in this gear. Okay. And such type of the gear train is called as the epicyclic gear. Okay. Uh, to find out the velocity ratio of such type of the epicyclic gear train, it is it is complicated or we cannot be find out the if I give the rotation to gear A. So I cannot be find out the rotation of the gear B if there is an epicyclic gear train. So or cannot be find out with the means by observation we cannot find out the rotation of the gear B and speed of the gear B. So it is necessary to do some calculation and by doing this calculation we can find out the speed of the gear B and in which direction it will rotate. Okay. So to find out this there are generally two methods that is first one is the tabular method and second one is the relative velocity method. So today we will discuss about the tabular method to find out the velocity ratio of the gear train or find out the speed of the gear B or direction of rotation of the gear B. Okay. So tabular method. Before discuss about the tabular method, suppose here if I make this arm C fixed, if 
I make this up C kicks, then velocity ratio. Velocity ratio of this gear drag. If I make this arm C fix and then I want to find out the velocity ratio of the gear train. The velocity ratio of the gear train is equal to speed of the driver upon speed of the driven. I give the if the gear A is rotating in a clockwise direction, then velocity ratio is equal to speed of driver upon speed of driven. Suppose I will one suppose yes A comma N B with the speed of gear E R P M speed of the gear A comma B in RPM respectively. Any is the speed of the gear A and any is the speed of the gear B. Then T A comma T B is the number of teeth on gear A and B respectively. Okay. So velocity ratio is equal to velocity ratio is equal to N A divided by N B or it is also equal to P B divided by T A. Okay. Suppose gear A is rotating in a clockwise direction. So I will consider the clockwise direction is as a positive and anti-clockwise direction is a negative. Clockwise direction is equal to plus and tick clock. direction is equal to negative. Okay. So therefore, N A divided by N B is equal to minus T B divided by T A. Why this is? Because if the gear A is rotating in a clockwise direction, then gear B B will rotate in anti-clockwise direction. That's why. The N A divided by N B is equal to minus T B divided by T. It is not different, but only negative sign indicate that gear B will rotate in a anti-clockwise direction. Okay. So suppose I give one revolution plus three one revolution to gear A, then gear B. How much revolution of the gear B will contain? Suppose let N A is equal to plus one. Therefore. One upon N A, sorry, one upon N B is equal to minus T B divided by T A, and N B is equal to minus T A divided by T B. This is the revolution of the gear B when I give the one revolution to the gear A in a clockwise direction. Okay, so remember this term. So we will start with the What is the tabular method? Tabular method to find out the speed of the gears in a gear track and direction of rotation of the gear in a gear track. Okay. To find out this, we have to make one table. The tabular method consists of a table. We will draw this table. That first first column is steps. Second column. Is motion and third column is revolution of energy. Revolution of electrics. Okay. So we will take the example of this gear train. 
there are three elements. In this gear then there are three elements that is gear A, gear B and arm C. So we, I mark here the three. Uh, so first of all we will draw this table. And under this column we will make the three columns. That is first one for arm C, then gear A and gear B. Always if we solve the numerical which is related to the city cycle gear then we will always mark first element as the arm C, then arm C and we will rotate so we will make this arm as the fix and then we will rotate the, this gear or we will rotate this gear with center over so that second element is gear A and third element is gear B ok so we will step one step one make this column is larger ok step one is what make the arm C fix make Arm um, C fixed and Q plus one revolution to gear A. Okay. First of all, we will do what we will do. We will mark this arm as the fixed. We will consider this arm C is fixed. So, and we will give one revolution plus one revolution to the gear A. So, revolution of the element C. We have to apply this condition and then we have to find out the revolution of this element. Okay. Um, when we mark the arm C fixed, then it means arm C is fixed, so there is no any revolution, means arm C will perform a zero revolution. So, revolution of the arm C is equal to 0. We are giving the plus 1 revolution to the gear A. We are giving plus 1 revolution to the gear A. So, revolution of the gear A is equal to plus 1. Okay. Now, when we give, when we mark this arm C fix and give plus 1 revolution to gear A, then how much revolution of the gear B will perform? We will find out this. Uh, we have to follow that Na divided by Nb is equal to minus Tb divided by Ta. We mark Na is equal to 1, that is Nb is equal to minus Tb divided by Ta. Therefore, Nb is equal to minus Ta divided by Tb. Okay? This is the revolution of the gear B. This is the position of the gear. I will mark this column as larger. Okay. So when I give to fix the arm C and give plus one revolution to gear A, then gear B will perform minus T A divided by T B revolution. Okay. Why minus then? Because gear B will rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. And here, what is the value of T A? T A is the number of teeth on a gear A. And Tb is the number of teeth on the gear B. Therefore, this value is equal to minus Ta divided by Tb. Okay? This is our first step. Now, this is step 1 is completed here. Step 2. Multiply. Multiply by x means what? We are giving here we give the plus one revolution to the gear one. So multiply by x means we are giving plus one revolution to the gear a. Means give plus x revolution to gear a. 
when we give a plus x revolution to the gear A, we already fix the gear arm C. Arm C is fixed, therefore revolution performed by the arm C is equal to 0. Okay. We are giving plus x revolution to the gear A. Therefore, revolution of the gear A is equal to plus x. Here, we are, when we give plus 1 revolution to gear A, then number of revolution performed by the gear B is equal to minus k divided by kb. Similarly, when we give plus x revolution to gear A, then number of revolution performed by the gear B is equal to minus x into k divided by k. Therefore, here it is equal to minus x into t divided by k. Okay. So this is our second step. Now, now. Third step. What is the third step? Add plus y revolution to each element. Add plus y revolution to each element. Means what? We are giving so first of all we make the gear, we make the arm C fix, but after that we are giving plus Y revolution to each element. Okay, so we are giving Y revolution to arm C also, gear A also and gear B. Therefore, we are adding the Y. We are adding Y. So Y is added in here. Okay. Step 4. Step 4 is total revolution. Total revolution. Total revolution means add step 2 and step 3. We are adding step 2 and step 3. Here we will add here is step 2, step 3. Therefore, Four step is equal to here is y, here is x plus y, and here y minus x into t divided by t. Okay, and by using this table, we can find out the number of feet or the or speed of the any element in a gear train, or we can find out the Direction of rotation of the each element in the gear. Okay, uh, so this is the table which is the, which we required while solving the numerical. Okay, so here we uh, take one numerical on eighty cycle gear train. So it is better to understand than us. Okay. We will take my numerical. Okay. An epicyclic gear train consists of
So we need to tell. Okay. The number of teeth on an angular gear. The number of teeth on angular gear A is seventy-four. The number of teeth on an angular gear is seventy-four, and on gear C is thirty. The gear B it meshes with the gear B meshes with both gear A and C and it carries an arm. About the center, which rotates about the center A at twenty five hundred. If gear A is fixed, if gear A is fixed, find the speed of gear B and C. Find speed of gear B and C. Okay. Uh, first of all, we draw the diagram here. So we will mark first of all the gear. So this is our numerical. First of all, I will uh, we will discuss this numerical and then we will solve this. Okay. And if we say the gear trait consists of three gears. There are three gear. This is gear. This is gear A. This is gear B. And this is gear C. Okay. And uh, this has shown in figure. The number of teeth on an angular gear A is the number of we find here B one. Number of teeth means n a is equal to seventy four. The number of teeth and angular gear. Angular gear means this is the gear a and which has an internal peak. Generally, if we consider this is the gear and the teeth are outside of the gear, but angular gear means it has an internal peak. Okay, so this gear b. Meshing internally with the gear A. This is called the angular gear. Means when it's such type of the gear, then the rotation of this gear and this gear will be same. Yeah. When this gear is rotated in 
inside this circle we in clockwise direction then gear a will also rotate in the clockwise direction this is the meaning of the internal gear or angular gear yeah the gear a is 74 and gear c is 34 means number of p on gear c is equal to 34 i will check once again this okay and c then the gear b is meshed with the gear a and c this is the gear b which is meshing with this gear a and this gear c okay this is gear b these gear are meshing with gear b is meshing with gear angular gear a and gear c also and it carries an arm f here this is this is the arm f which is which is joining the center of the gear b and center of the gear c okay above the center a at 25 rpm means speed of the arm m f is equal to 25 rpm if the gear a is fixed here the given that condition the gear a is fixed okay the gear a is fixed find the speed of the gear b and c we have to find out and how sorry this is the number of teeth sorry i have created this is number of teeth that is p a and number of teeth on us here is p c we have to find out the speed of the gear c and speed of the gear b okay we have to find out this okay so first of all we will draw the table uh, that is we discuss the tabular method and we will solve this method uh, so step our this is step here is motion here is uh, revolution of element okay revolution of the elements uh, so i will write this on here step motion and revolution of the here we will mark the elements the first element is r f then here here we have small let me i will first uh, cancel it and we will write here here is a step motion revolution of the elements revolution of elements in this numerical there are four elements that is first one arm f gear a gear b gear c okay so arm f gear a gear b and gear c okay gear a gear b and gear c but uh, here the gear c as a center and arm is connected also at the center therefore we will take this sequence as gear c here is gear c at the center therefore after arm f we will mark the gear c then gear b and then gear a so we will mark right here the gear arm f gear c gear b and gear a okay so our first step is fix the arm f and give plus 1 revolution to gear c we will mark this arm as a fix and give the one revolution give one revolution to gear c here i write c this is gear b okay 
when here we marking the pump f as a base and giving a plus one revolution to the gear b then what is the revolution of the gear b so first of all The arm F is fixed, therefore this is zero, giving a plus one revolution to the gear C. Okay, so when I make the arm fixed, then this gear, means this gear C is rotating in a clockwise direction, this gear B will rotate in a anti direction. Gear B rotate in an anti-clockwise direction because they are facing externally to each other. Therefore, this gear B will rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. So, if I want to write N B upon N C is equal to minus T C divided by T B. This is our general formula. When I give in the plus one revolution to gear C, means N C is when I put when C is equal to one, then N B is equal to N B is equal to minus T C divided by TB minus TC divided by TB. Okay, so I will write here minus TC divided by TB. Okay, now now this B will rotate in a minus TC divided by TB. Then we have to find out the Speed of the gear A. How the gear A will rotate? First of all, the gear B is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction. B. When B is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction, then gear A also rotates in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay. So gear A is also rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. Then I have to find out the speed of the gear A. Speed of the gear A. Okay. So N C divided by N B is equal to minus T B divided by T C. Okay. This is if I can say this is equation one. Now N B divided by N B. N B divided by N B that is equal to T A divided by T A divided by T B. Why there is no minus sign? Because they are measuring internally. Means gear, the direction of the gear B will same as the direction of the gear A. Okay. And here we are giving. Now if I take the multiplication of these two equation, E. I take the multiplication of these two equations, then we will get N C divided by N B into N B divided by N A is equal to minus T B divided by T C into T A divided by T B. This T B will get cancelled, N B and B get cancelled, N C divided by N A. Is equal to minus T A divided by T C, and here N C is equal to one. We are giving the plus one revolution to gear C. Therefore, N A is equal to minus T C divided by T B. What is the revolution performed by the gear A is equal to minus T C divided by T A. Therefore, here it is equal to minus T C divided by T A. Okay. This is our homework. T C mix. Now, this is our first step. Now, second step. This is the first step. Second step is multiply by X. X means what? Multiply by X means we are giving plus X revolution to the gear C. Then here we mark the gear 
arm f is a fit therefore this is equal to 0 this is equal to plus x we are giving the plus x revolution to gear c when gear c is rotating with plus 1 revolution the revolution performed by the gear b is equal to minus dc divided by dt similarly when we give the plus x revolution to the gear c the number of revolution performed by the gear b is equal to minus x into dc divided by dt and similarly the number of revolution performed by the gear a is equal to minus x into dc divided by dt okay this is our second step now fourth step third step add y revolution and y in each of them we will add in y y y and y and fourth step is add step 2 and step 3 we have to add step 2 and step 3 If we add this step for arm F, then this is equal to y. Uh, for gear C, this is equal to x plus y. If it is equal to y minus x into T C divided by T D, and here y minus x into T C divided by T D. Okay, this is our table. Now. what we have to find out so what are the things we have given that that is the tip number of tip on the gear a is given that is equal to 74 number of tip on the gear c is equal to 34 speed of the gear f the speed of the arm f is given that is 25 rpm okay and they given that the gear a is fixed they given that gear a is fixed gear a is fixed means what the number of revolution performed by the gear a is zero therefore and a is equal to zero and a is equal to zero these are the given things and they what they ask they ask the speed of the gear c and speed of the gear b okay so we have to solve this numerical uh, so we will solve from here that is the given that na is equal to 0 na means speed of the gear a this is the equation for the speed of the gear a they have given that the speed of the gear a is Speed of the gear A is zero means what is this means y minus x into T A divided by sorry T C divided by T A T C divided by T A is equal to zero means what y is equal to x into T C what is the value of T C that is equal to thirty four Y is equal to 34 divided by T A that is 74. Okay, we will mark this as equation one. Now they have given that the N F, the speed of the arm, N F is equal to 20 kilo rpm. Here given the revolution of the element arm F, revolution of the element F is equal to Y means Y is equal to y is equal to n f. Why y is equal to n f? Because the term which are mentioned in row number four, this each term represents the rotation of each element. Why represent? Why represent the number of revolution performed by the arm f 
x plus y represents the number of revolutions performed by the gear C. This term represents the number of uh, revolutions performed by the gear B, and this term represents the number of revolutions performed by the gear A. Therefore, y represents the number of revolutions performed by the arm F. And in numerical, we given that the number of revolutions performed by the gear or arm F is equal to 25 RP. Means y is equal to 25 here. Y is equal to 25. I will clean this item. Okay, so y is equal to 25. Then 20, equation 1 becomes 25 is equal to x into 34 divided by 74. And therefore x is equal to 25 into 74 divided by 34. And therefore x is equal to 54.41 rp x is equal to plus 55.411 rp now we what things we have to find out we have to find out the revolution of the gear c and revolution of the gear b means we have to find out the value of this term and this term okay so nc nc is equal to what sorry nc the evolution of the gear c nc is equal to what eh? the equation for nc is equal to x plus y because this x plus y term represents the number of revolution performed by the gear c therefore nc is equal to x plus y x is equal to 54. Point 411 plus y is equal to 25 so it is equal to 79.411 rpm nc is equal to 79.411 rpm okay and this the plus term the plus term indicates that when we give up the y revolution to the arm f in clockwise direction, then gear nc, gear c will rotate also in a clockwise direction. I will write in a small diagram. Uh, our diagram was suppose this is our gear a, this is gear a. So this is if this is the center, then this is the gear. This is the gear C, here is gear B, and this center and this center are connected by the arm F. Okay, this gear B, this is gear C, and this is the arm F. Okay, so this is our diagram. So when we give, we have given that arm F is rotating in. 25 rpm. We consider this rpm of the arm in a clockwise direction. When this arm F is rotated in a clockwise direction by 25 rpm, then gear C, this gear C will rotate and in a clockwise direction because this there is a plus sign for this NC. So it will present a clockwise rotation and rotation of speed of the gear C is 70. 9.411 rp this is the okay now we have to find out the speed of the gear b the speed of the gear b is equal to nb nb is equal to y minus x divided by pc divided by t okay the speed of the can be is equal to y minus x into pc divided by t so we will remove this all the table here now this term is represent the number of revolution performed by the gear b which is denoted by n b so y is equal to 